and color. Color means answer or answer. Many expenses. Vaibha Prakash, Prabha Prakash, Vaibha Vilas, Prabha Vilas, sponsor, and other types of avatars. So, depending on the gradations of the Ishtadev, we can understand what level the devotee is on, and also by the nature of his service. So, Sri Gurudev asked me to speak something about the bhakti of Amrishwaj and compare that to the bhakti of Prahlad Maharaj. So, in the ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, there, Shukadev Goswami, he became very happy to explain the history of Amrish Maharaj. And he described it in this way. So, by Mana Krishna Padara Vindayo, Vachan Sivai Kunta Guna Navarane, Karo Hanuman Diramajana Dishu, Shukin Chakarachuta Sakato Day. Amrish Maharaj. He engaged his mind in always remembering the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He engaged his words in always describing the Harikata. He used his hands in personally, though he had many, many servants. Many servants. He would personally, oh, leaving his kingly duties, come to the temple and clean the temple with his own hands. He would use his ears in always hearing Harikata. His eyes in beholding the deity of the Lord. His hands in massaging the bodies of Krishna's pure devotees who would come to his palace, like Narad, like Sanat Kumar, four Kumars. Hmm? He would use his tongue in tasting the um, tosi which had been offered to the Lord to speak of the Lord. And his nose in smelling the flowers which had been offered to the Lord. He would use his head in bowing down to the deity of the Lord and his pure devotees. He would use his feet in doing Parakrama. What Parakrama? Brajavandal Parakrama. Where was Amrish Maharaj doing his bhajan? He had left his kingdom and come to Mathura. Mathura is in Madhuva, in Brajavanda, on the bank of Jamuna. So he would do the Parakrama of Brajadhan. And he would use his glory of Pritibhashna. No, no, he means the glory of Pritibhashna. Uh, Knowing the glories of the Vrindavasis, this is extraordinary. And he would also use all of his desires in fulfilling the desires of the Lord. This is very important. And Yajitama Sloka Janashraya Rati. He had Rati, deep attachment for Uttama Sloka Jan, or as Gurudev said, knowing the glories of Vrindavasis. Vrindavasis is actually Uttama Sloka Jan. So here it said, he used his desires in fulfilling the desires of the Lord. Let us compare this with Prahlad Maharaj. When Narasimha Dev told Prahlad Maharaj, I want to give you a benediction. You can ask anything you want from me. Or Prahlad Maharaj said, I am not a businessman. I have not served you to get anything in return. Hmm? So he did not have an idea what to ask. He thought, I have no desires. Hmm? He was not thinking, what does Narasimha Dev want? So then he said, no, you must take a benediction. Prahlad Maharaj said, Oh, I am praying that in the core of my heart I will have no material desires. The Singh said, Oh, you already have no desires. But this is not a benediction, you should ask again. So, okay, I am asking for the benediction that my father eh, should not suffer for the offenses that he committed to me. He should be liberated. The Singh Dev, he explained, Oh, actually, your father and 21 generations were already liberated. Those who Mahabharata they deliver 21 generations of your family. Again, ask for a benediction. Hmm? So then, Prahlad Maharaj, he prayed, Oh, please give me this benediction. All the Jeevas in the world are suffering. I cannot bear to see this. You give me all of their suffering. I will suffer on their behalf and let them be liberated. Guru Singh Dev had tears in his eyes. He said, I am being defeated by you because I cannot allow you to suffer. But I will give the benediction. If anyone will hear about your pastimes with me, very soon they will have bhakti and will be liberated from this world. We get this benediction. So this is a very wonderful thing. But just see, Prahlad Maharaj never asked for anything for the Nasimha He asked for himself, he asked for his father, he asked for all the living entities of the world. But what about Lord Nasimha He did not ask anything for him. Hmm? If the brother and you want to give a benediction to Rupa Goswami, then what will he say? Karam bo ate param 
Tapa Brinda, the Chatra Vartini, Abhikeshi Ripayar Bhagatsa, Chatra Prata Mubajanandanaha, being absorbed in the mood of Rupa Mandari. Then she will say, Oh Radhika, if you want to give me a benediction, then you give me that benediction. That when Krishna comes to meet with you, he cannot meet with you without coming and begging permission from me first. <laughs> Why? Oh, hearing this, Radhika becomes overwhelmed with joy. Why? Because Rupa Mandari, she knows. I will ask a benediction which will not give happiness to me, it will give happiness to my Swamini. So this is the nature of pure bhakti, always thinking how to give pleasure to one's Ishtade and fulfill their desires. So here it is said, and Kame, Kame, that Anrish Maharaj, he used all of his desires in fulfilling the desires of the Lord, not for his desires or anyone else's desires. So Anrish Maharaj, Practically, he engaged all of his senses in feeding Krishna, offering Maha, Naivedya, Mahaprasadam to Krishna, Fanny, serving him in so many ways. But Prahlad Maharaj, he has Santabhav. In Santabhav there is Krishna Nishta, that means the mind is fixed on Krishna. And Krishna Char, there is no thirst. But another quality is Mamata Gandhahin, not a smell of possessiveness. Hmm? But Andrish Maharaj, he has so much possessiveness. Hmm? Pilat Maharaj is Siddha. He has a transcendental body, he's attained perfection. When they tried to cut him to pieces, he could not be cut. Why? His body is Satyadamanda. He's an, an associate of the Lord. But uh, Andrish Maharaj, he's a sadhak. He has not attained his Vastu Siddhi, spiritual body in the transcendental realm, having no connection with the sadhak form. And therefore he is sadhak. So in that sense, he is not on the same level as Pallad Maharaj. But because his bhakti is sh Shuddha bhakti, not, he is not a Jnani bhakti. Because his service is Anukul Yena Krishna Anushilanam. Hmm? He is doing Krishna Anushilanam. That means the constant endeavor of his body, mind, words and moods in the service of Krishna. Pallad Maharaj is also doing some Anushilanam, but only in the form of glorifying the Lord and remembering Him. But He's not engaging all of His senses in the various uh, angles of devotional service as Pallad Maharaj is doing. And <coughs> Andrish Maharaj is doing. And Pallad Maharaj, His Ishta Dev is Narasimha Dev, Lord Narasimha Dev. Lord Narasimha Dev is Atmaram, Aptakam. All of His desires are fulfilled. He has no hunger, thirst, appetite, tiredness or anything. But Andrish Maharaj, his Ishtadev is Krishna. Mm -hmm. And therefore, because his Ishtadev is far superior, Narasimha Dev is expansion of expansion of expansion of expansion of Krishna. Therefore, because Andrish Maharaj, his Ishtadev is the original and supreme, therefore, he is considered to be far superior to Prahlad Maharaj, though now he is in static stage. It means that one day, when his bhakti is mature, when he becomes Siddha, he will be situated in a spiritual realm far above the realm where Pallad Maharaj is eternally serving his Ishtadev. Any good kids? Good, 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 good. And you can sing. Very good. Radha Ramana Hari Bol Ajay 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 Radha Ramana Hari Bol 
गोपिंद जय जय गोपाल Thank you. 